reviewing what we did last time. Um, I already reviewed uh, in the last lecture about this uh, Hermitian and uh, self-adjoint matrix. I uh, won't go into the details. Uh, basically, it is that if you have a matrix, you can find its adjoint matrix, right? And if they are equal to each other, we say it is self-adjoint and then uh, it is called Hermitian also. And by the way, again, how do you get the adjoint matrix? You do the transpose, uh, swap the row and column, and then apply the complex conjugate. Right? So sometimes people uh, call this Hermitian conjugate. And we say that if you have a matrix which is Hermitian, the eigenvalue is going to be real. Okay, so even you forgot how to derive it, you need to derive it again in your homework, right? But even you forgot how to derive it, this is a very important uh, statement in quantum mechanics and quantum computing. So everything you can measure must be a real value. As a result, the corresponding matrix or operation to that measurement, right, uh, uh, or to that uh, quantity must be Hermitian. We use a few of the identity. I really hope you can go through it because this, this, uh, all the skill you, you, you need in the future to prove something, right? And uh, so that's what I want to say. Any questions regarding this? Okay, you can stop me anytime. If no, let me uh, move forward now. So uh, I want to, last time we already discussed how to do the matrix diagonalization. Uh, I mean, how to find the eigenvalues. We did not talk about di diagonalization. We say how to find the eigenvalue and eigenvector, right? We just solve the equation. So here we use another method to find the eigenvalues and eigenvector. And at the same time, I try to introduce the concept of matrix diagonalization. It is equivalent to finding eigenvalue and eigenvector, okay? So let's look at a matrix, for example, A, a matrix. Now I'm going to spell it out. I have A, 0, 0, A, uh, 0, 1, all the way to A, 0, N, minus 1. So I hope that you now uh, be familiar with this. Whenever I write a matrix, right, I will have the element as A, I, J, as the index. A, I, J. I, the first one, refers to the row, and the second one refers to the column, right? This is our convention and most convention and convention in most of other test books. So hope that you uh, follow this. So for example, this is A0, zero, zero means the zeroth row, zeroth column. A0, N-1 means the zeroth row, N-1 column, okay? So with this, then of course the second one will be A10 because this is the first row, uh, zero column, right? So also you see that I start labeling it, I label it start by starting from uh, zero instead of one, right? This is uh, what similar to what you do in computer programming and also uh, a, a good convention, right? And then the next one will be A11 right? And then dot, 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 the last one will be A1 and minus 1 because it's the first row. I mean, first row means the number one row, right? Uh, which is the second row, uh, right? And then the last column. And then you continue with this, right? Although it is messy, but if you understand what we are doing, how to, how to do the labeling, you naturally know that the last one must be a n minus one zero because it's an a n minus one column and then the uh, row and then the zero column, right? And then at the end, I have a n minus one and minus one. This is the last column and the last, make, uh, uh, last row, uh, right? So in summary, I, I can also just represent saying that, okay, I have a matrix and its elements are A, I, J. When I write it in this way, I assume that I already know that how many columns and how many rows. By the way, how many columns and how many rows do we have here? If you want to answer, you can answer, otherwise, that it, otherwise it's fine. Isn't it? And it's N by N. Thank you. It's N by N. Right? That's why our last index is n minus one because it starts from zero. Okay, so this is just a matrix, right? 
Um, and then we say that if you if this is a uh, Hermitian, right? I'm sorry, not Hermitian. I mean, nothing to do with Hermitian. So we want to find the eigenvalue, right? We want to want to find the eigenvalue. It means that a this matrix times, for example, lambda i must be equal to lambda i, lambda i k, right? Basically, basically we are saying that this is the eigenvector of the matrix, right? And this is the eigenvalue, right? You will learn this before. Again, the reason it is the eigenvector because you apply the matrix to the vector, it gives you the same vector except scale it by a number. And by definition, this is the eigenvector of A and this is the eigenvalue of A. Okay, so we are just reviewing some definition, right? These are the definition. Okay, so now how can I find it? One way is that like what we did earlier, right? Uh, now I make it into, like, what we did earlier is just two by two matrix, right? But now I can say, how about this? Um, we assume the eigenvector And right, I, I just call eigenvector lambda i. I just call it lambda i, okay? Not so that you won't confuse with the labeling, right? Because uh, it is okay if I call it, but it is a little bit confusing if some of you, right? Just uh, uh, call it lambda i, and I assume it has the this vector alpha zero all the way alpha n minus one. When I write this down again, you see I have n components, so it's an n-dimensional vector, which makes sense, right? And again, the first one saying that we have alpha zero component of the first basis vector, R1, we have R1 components of the second basis vector, and we have alpha n minus one of the uh, last basis vector. But this is the in the basis we are uh, dealing with, right? Uh, which we don't say it out explicitly. But if we, I write it in this way, then of course I can also then I have this A times lambda equals to then I write out everything A zero zero a01 all the way to uh, to safe space i don't want to write a01 right all the way to a0 n minus 1 again i try to save the space and then this is a0 no what is this this is a n minus 1 because this is the last row the first column and then a n minus 1 and and minus one okay and then i just write out alpha zero alpha one all the way to alpha n minus one right and this is the left hand side right hand side is what lambda times alpha zero alpha alpha zero alpha one all the way to alpha n minus one what i'm doing is just using this equation this one give me this part, this one give me this part, right? So A times lambda, just the whole matrix times the uh, base, the coefficient of the vector equals to lambda times the coefficient of the vector, right? Stop me if anything is not clear. But here I can further write it in this way. You see that what this does is just multiply alpha lambda, which is a number, just a scalar, to each of these number become alpha zero lambda, alpha one lambda, alpha n minus one lambda, and it, it it is easy to see that this is just equals to lambda zero zero lambda. Maybe this one I cannot save zero. Zero, 
zero zero lambda. Basically, it is just a diagonal matrix filled with lambda times alpha zero alpha one all the way to alpha n minus one. So it's easy to prove because this matrix multiply this one is just lambda times alpha zero and then zero times the rest of the term. So the first one is lambda alpha zero, right? Then the second term is this row times this column. So zero times alpha zero is zero lambda times alpha one. So I have lambda times alpha one, then the rest is zero. And then the last one, zero times everything and then plus lambda times alpha n minus one. So this one is correct. It's exactly a lamp. This is just equals to lambda. times the identity matrix and then times this one. Uh, is this okay? Now, so I, I know that actually this supposed to be very, this supposed to be a very simple thing, right? And just hold on, I might not. This this is supposed to be a very simple thing. Uh, I try to expand it because I think you don't want to have any room to make mistake when you are doing uh, uh, during with the matrix. We're working with the matrix. I want you to be very clear about how everything change, right? So all I want to say here is that now I can combine it. On the left is a lambda equals to lambda i times lambda, yeah. So I can move everything to the right. So I have a lambda minus lambda i times lambda, which is equals to, again, this is vector, this is vector. And these two are matrix, right? A and lambda i are matrix. So this one is equal to a minus lambda, should not have the magnitude, just a minus lambda i, times lambda equals to zero. Uh, this is uh, imply. Is this okay? Because this one equal, so, so here I also say something wrong. It should be implies, right? So a lambda equal to lambda i times lambda equals to a lambda minus, I keep, doing things wrong. This is equal to zero. And then this one implies this. I move the whole term to the left. That is a lambda minus lambda i times lambda. The whole thing is zero, right? And then I factorize it, I get this one. Is this okay? So basically, so this become a system of linear equation, right? The reason I do this uh, is just to review the concept. So in order to have long trivial solution, you need the determinant of a minus lambda i equals to zero to have long trivial solution. So what is trivial solution? This one, for example, this equation, the trivial solution is that lambda i has all components equal to zero, right? If this alpha i, alpha zero to alpha m minus one is zero, then of course matrix, this matrix times zero must be a number times zero, then zero, zero, zero as uh, the trivial solution, but meaningless solution because we do need to, to have a long trivial solution. Long -trivial solution. Right. Otherwise, they're just zero vector. Right. So in order to have long trivial solution is asking for a minus lambda i uh, determinant of this value equals to zero. This is a little bit like our regular algebra a times b equal to zero. If you don't want to have b equal to zero, your a must be equal to zero. Right. But of course, this is at a more abstract level. Okay, so now here what I'm trying to say is we no need to go through this. Next time you just try to compute a minus lambda i. Then you will be able to find the solution, uh, the eigenvalues. 
Is this okay? Any questions? The best is let's do a uh, uh, do an example, right? So the first thing, uh, okay, uh, actually before the example, I want to talk about the matrix uh, diagonalization and its eigenvalue. If we represent the matrix, now just now when we represent this matrix, we don't know what basis we are using. We do not say anything. Okay, so you can use any basis, then the A value will be different. But what if we represent it in the basis formed by its eigenvectors? So each matrix n by n has n eigenvectors. Then we form the basis by its eigenvector. Then the matrix must be diagonal. Okay, so you just take this uh, for granted, right? And then we will try to kind of track it or approve it. Okay, so what I'm saying is here. If I, I, instead of lambda, I call it, instead of lambda I, I want to call it I now. I hope you can uh, change your mind very quick uh, with this, right? Sometimes I call it lambda I, but it doesn't matter because inside the cat or bra, these are just description, right? Is an eigenvector. of a then what does it mean it means a times i must be equal to lambda i times i right and we have n of them if a is n by n matrix then i have n eigen vectors and what are they i can call them zero one all the way to i and then all the way to n minus one. I'm just saying that, okay, these are the eigenvector of A. So in that case, if we represent, right, if use the basis if we use the basis form by is eigenvectors means that now the basis are formed by its eigenvector right not the basis by z or computational basis or whatever then a is then let me redo it Then A equals to lambda zero, lambda one, lambda two, all the way to lambda n minus one. And then the other elements are zero. Okay, so it's a diagonal matrix. Everything is zero except the diagonal. And its elements are just its eigenvalues. Okay, so this is just a statement. The important thing is I need you to understand what I'm talking about, right? We're talking about a matrix n by n. It has its eigenvectors. If I form, if I use its eigenvector as the basis state, right? Remember, we can have different bases, right? It's up to you how to transform from one egg to 12 eggs, right? From English to Russian or whatever, right? Once you but this time I use the eigenvector as the basis, then A will be diagonal. So you find that you see that if I can find its eigenvector and eigenvalue, I will be able to find its diagonal form also. On the other hand, if I can diagonalize a matrix, I would have successfully find the uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector. So matrix diagonalization and eigenvalue eigenvector uh, finding are equivalent. They are both difficult. Okay, so uh, let's check if this is the case. It's very easy to check or prove, right? Just by definition, it's too easy. What is the column form of I? 
I is the eigenvector of A. Okay, so if we use the this basis, right? If we use the basis formed by its eigenvector, what will be the form of uh? Or what will be the column form? Maybe this is uh. I start with I. Maybe too difficult. Well, how would you represent the first eigenvector zero? In the eigen in the basis formed by the eigenvectors of A. Now then you ask yourself, what is the meaning of the first entry? Then it means how much component I have for the first basis vector. Second vector entry is how much component I have for the second basis vector. But now because I'm using the eigenvector as the basis vector. So basically, here is saying that the first entry refer to how much component I have for zero, here how much component I have for one, and eventually how much component I have for n n minus one, because the basis is formed by the eigenvector. Of a, right? Because we already use eigenvector of a to form the basis. Then the first one must be zero. The first eigenvector of a, second eigen eigenvector of a, the nth eigenvector of a, right? So naturally, zero of course is just one because zero is equal to one zero. And similarly, for example, I. Must be equal to zero, zero all the way have have one and then zero, and this refer to that I have one component in the i-th row. Is this okay? Let's think for thirty seconds, right? Any questions? So if no question, then we can prove it, right? So for example, uh, I'm running out of space. Sorry for this messy. For example, what is a j? What is a j? A because now we form in its a uh, basis formed by its eigenvector. This is equal to lambda zero, all the way to lambda j, all the way to lambda n minus one, the whole thing, right? And then j is what zero zero, and then eventually I have a one, and then zero, and this is at the j row, at the j row, then to represent j because indeed the j eigenvector has one unique component of j basis vector because the basis vector is the eigenvector of a right so you just do the matrix multiplication you will find that this is of course you look at this this is lambda zero times zero and then the rest is zero so the first term must be zero right and only when you reach the j column j row would you have a long zero product because this is j column times this j row give me lambda j, right? So this is lambda j, and then the rest a zero also. Okay, so with that, this is uh, I'm sorry that I don't have enough space, right? So I come here. I think I need to make this clearer. So you get zero, and then you have lambda j, and then zero. Again, this is the j row, right? 
Of course, this is equal to what? I can factorize j out. And then this is just one, the, right? Which is equals to uh, the vector j. So for some of you, this might be trivial, but I hope to review this with you and uh, you have a better appreciation on the matrix and cat, right? But here I kind of prove to you, uh, make this concept also very confusing, but this, the quantum computing uh, or quantum mechanics, the most confusing part is the, cho uh, the choice of basis. So again, the final word is, if you use the eigenvector of A, as the basis vector, then when you represent A in that basis basis, you will have a diagonalized matrix, and each of them are its eigen uh, values. And then here is just a checking and proof, right, that what I'm saying is correct. But the main point is here. Okay. Any questions? Okay, I think the best thing is let's do some example, right? Uh, doing example will help you really understand it. For example, I have sigma x. I hope you remember what is sigma x, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so how do I find the eigenvector and eigenvalue? I can use the equation. I say that sigma x minus lambda i must be equal to zero, okay? This is what we derived in the previous two slides, right? The two slides ago, yeah? Because now sigma x is A, right? And then we assume its eigenvalue is lambda and then times I. So what does this mean? It means I'm going to find the determinants of sigma x, zero, one, one, zero, minus the lambda times i, i is identity is one, zero, zero, one, equals to zero, right? So I can further simplify it. This is easy, right? Zero minus lambda times one, which is negative lambda, and then one minus zero give me one, one minus give me one, and then this give me negative lambda again, right? This is what? Zero minus this term, but this term need to multiply by lambda. So zero minus lambda, give me negative lambda. Similarly for this term, right? And the other are one. How do you find the determinant? Uh, if you forgot, you need to review, right? But for two by two, it's easy. It's just this diagonal, this term times this term minus this term minus uh, times this term, right? So make sure you know how to do this. Right, it's like this, right? If you forgot, you really need to review. Okay, so uh, this is a way I write it, it's up to you. So this becomes what? Lambda square minus one equal to zero, which means lambda square equal to one. So what are the possible eigenvalue? Plus or minus one. This is exactly what we found earlier by using another method. And it's no surprising because the so-called another method is exactly the same equivalent to this method. This one, we just calculate determinant directly. But for that one, we solve the system of linear equation, which are just equivalent. Okay, so this is that uh, we use this method to find the eigenvalue, right? So in the textbook, uh, in the assignment, I also ask you to use this method to find the eigenvalue of sigma y. Okay, so try that. Now with the eigenvalue, then I can find the eigenvector, which is just like what we did earlier. So we say sigma x times, maybe I, let me write clearly. Right, so you, you, you will feel that I'm repeating something what I was doing before because they are just equivalent. So it's no surprise that they are equivalent, they are similar. But you just want, I just want you to be aware of this, right? To find the eigenvector, of course, we have sigma x times AB. I will assume the eigenvector is AB equals to, for example, we start with one, 
times a lambda a b right we assume that uh, let's look at the eigenvector equal to one so in this case we have zero one one zero a b equals to a b right so we have b a equals to a b so we are repeating what we did earlier a equal to b b equal to a right so we choose so we decided to choose we have many choices but we choose what we choose a equals to b equals to one over square root two because this gives us a normalized uh vector and this one we uh have the lambda let me call it lambda zero equals to one over square root two one one okay Maybe let me call it lambda one actually, because of the way we write it. Right. We also call this the plus state. Now this is the real plus state for for the uh for for the poly matrix. Earlier we have a fake example. Remember we say that uh we call this is zero. This is one, and then we rotate it by. 45 degree we call this plus state this minus state it has the same real equation if you try to correlate them but this is a fake one right this one is fake because our spin does not live on the 2d plane that we can see it is a another space with complex coefficient right but indeed it still obey the rule that as you can see this is one over square root two zero plus one do you see that because when we write it in this way we are saying that it has one unit of zero and one unit of one and zero and one are the eigenvector of sigma z right so i'm not going to do the uh, uh negative one but you can check it yourself check yourself right for lambda equal to negative one you will get lambda zero vector equals to one over square root two one negative one minus right very similar to this one again this means it is one over square root two zero minus one that's why i said at that time you can memorize that equation because they actually the equation was correct Okay, so now you see something. This sigma x has an eigenvalue plus minus one. Sigma z also has eigenvalue plus minus one, but they have different eigenvector, right? The plus plus eigenvector correspond to the zero eigen uh, to correspond to the uh, actually the one eigenvector in z. Okay, they have different eigenvector, but they have the same eigenvalue. Is that okay? Any questions? Okay, anyway, so we have learned how to diagonalize the matrix, which means how to find the eigenvalue using another form, okay? But uh, I do hope that you can follow what I'm saying here on every step because this is something that I got confused when I was a student when I was learning quantum computing or quantum mechanics so make sure you understand if no let me know right uh, okay now then what if I want to represent sigma x in the basis form by its eigenvector how would it look like So here is something I want you to be aware of. Sigma x, fine. I write sigma x. This is related to some physics. I've been writing this as 0, 1, 1, 0. What does it mean? It means I'm writing in sigma z basis, right? I, I say sigma z basis. What I mean is the sigma z what I mean is the basis formed by 
Sigma Z Eigen Vectors. Okay, so if you are talking at like, like the so-called computational basis, if you are um, measuring the spin QP in the Z direction, right, which means you have the magnetic field in vertical direction, whatever you measure is in the sigma Z basis or in your computation is in the sigma Z basis. But so when we uh, express sigma X, it will be, it will have this form. But isn't that we just say that if we express the matrix in is in the basis formed by its eigenvector, that means what if it is in the sig I just call it sigma x basis, basically saying that it is the basis formed by the eigenvector of sigma x. Then how will it look like? We say it has to be diagonal, right? So it needs to be lambda zero, one, uh, zero, and then lambda one, which is just equals to one, zero, zero, negative one in the sigma x basis. So here is very, uh, this makes sense because we have been saying that the universe is isotropic. I really don't care. The physics does not change whether you are uh, whether you are pointing in the z direction or x direction, right? It, you are still trying to measure measure the spin. So naturally, if I rotate all my apparatus, all my reference, including myself from z to x, I should see exactly the same physics, and it does give me the same eigenvalue. But at the same time, if I rotate all the way to x, I should also have the same matrix form in order to get the, the eigenvalue, right? So that is basically what it is saying here, right? So uh, the main thing you want to take home is that every matrix, if you just write the symbol, no ambiguity. But when you start writing it in a matrix form, then there will be a problem. You need to clearly say that what basis you are referring to, like how many X you have by, you cannot just say the number, you really need to tell me it's a one, dozen eight bases or 12 eight bases. So same here, right? If I it is expressed in sigma z basis, then this is the form we have been talking about. But if I express it in sigma x basis, it must be diagonal with its eigenvalue. And we just showed that its eigenvalue is one minus one. Okay, so now what is the eigenvector? We already did that, right? We already, I mean, here I just say that sigma x is also equal to one zero negative one in sigma x basis. Then we just like sigma c, right? The eigenvector must be, you just solve the equation, one zero and zero one that was the eigenvector for sigma z when you express it as one zero zero one right but now when i write this this is talking about sigma x basis which means the first one is talking about how much of plus i have and this is how much of minus i have instead of zero right so now we already kind of I did not say clearly, but we have been uh, using the fact that we have been using the assumption that zero and one refer to the uh, eigenvector of sigma z. And now we just proved that plus and minus are the eigenvector of sigma x. So this is completely correct. Of course, its eigenvector is one unit of plus. The reason I can say one zero because they represent different things. Okay. And you can check it clearly. This is correct. For example, if I check one zero zero negative one sigma x times one zero is giving me what? One zero, right? Because one times one plus zero times zero, zero times one negative one times zero is zero, right? This is sigma. 
and with a y eigenvalue equals to one, right? So everything works out, although maybe simple, uh, but I hope you appreciate why I'm trying to emphasize this. Okay, any questions? Okay, so now you know how to represent it, right? How about can we construct the operator from the eigenvectors and eigenvalue? So what 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 is the question here? It's saying that if I give you, right, someone give you, but th that give this is very important because you can get the eigenvalues from experiment, right? If I given the eigenvector. And of course, you know, every eigenvalue has a corresponding eigenvector, but you don't need to know what it is. All you know that is it has a vector and then we can express it in the basis. So I tell you this operator has n eigenvectors with the eigenvalues of lambda zero all the way to lambda n minus one. Okay, then the matrix equals to summation. You just add them up with i equal to zero to n minus one, lambda i times the outer product of the eigenvector. Now let's stop a little bit, see what we're trying to do. What we're saying is that the matrix is equals to each eigenvalue, right? Which means it's lambda zero times the outer product of lambda zero plus, because it's summation, right? Lambda one times outer product of lambda one plus all the way to the end. Okay, that is the meaning of this uh, outer product, this uh, uh, what you mean, right? And here let's just uh maybe some of you are uh, not very forgot what it means just uh for example let's get this one for example if i what if i want to what is the meaning of outer product for example lambda i may be equals to one zero lambda i equal to one zero for example then what is the outer product of this one? Actually, this is a very important matrix in the future, right? Again, outer product is the bra times the cat, uh, the cat times the bra. The bra needs to be transposed and then take complex conjugate, but they are real, so they are the same. So this is a column, this is a row, right? So what do you get? First row, one times first column, right? First row times first column becomes the first this element. And then first row times the second column becomes the first row and second column of the, this element, right? And then you repeat the same thing. Like this one is the second row times the first column becomes the second row and first column of this, of this matrix, right? So this is equal to one zero zero zero. Okay, this is something called racing operator or something. Here is. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I, I said it wrong. Not not the operator. So this is not the racing operator. But anyway, ignore me what I said. But basically, um, that's how you do the outer product. Okay, so that that's all I want to say about this page that that is how you construct the matrix but let's do an example for example given right the eigenvector of sigma x are 1 over square root 2 Uh, 1, 1, and 1 over square root 2, 1, negative 1, right? 
with the eigenvalue of plus 1 and eigenvalue of negative 1. Now, can someone tell me, I do want to test you, which basis are we using now when I write sigma x in this form? When I write its eigenvector in this form, what basis are we using? Sigma z. Thank you. Sigma z basis. It means this is one unit of 1 of 0, one unit of 1. Very good. That is the sigma z. Okay, so how do I find sigma x? Just follow the rule. Equals to summation i equals 0 to n minus 1. I only have two eigenvalues, so it's 2 minus 1. Lambda i, lambda i, lambda i, the output product. So I spell it out. The first is lambda 0, 0, 0, right? Because this is the... Okay, so if I do this, you got... I, I, you, I will confuse you, although I'm not, I, I don't know if, I, I cannot say, yeah, I better just say lambda zero instead of zero, because you will think that is the eigenvector of sigma c. So I need to be clear here. Lambda one, lambda one, lambda one. Is this okay? I just substitute i with zero and one. So what is lambda zero? Right, lambda zero here is plus one. And then I multiply it by 1 over square root 2 times uh, 1, 1, 1 over square root 2 times 1, 1 plus negative 1. Lambda 1 is negative 1 times 1 over square root 2, 1 negative 1. So here 1 negative 1 because this is the second vector, right? This is lambda 1 times 1 over square root 2, 1 negative 1. I'm doing the transpose, right? So you go through the math. Let me try to go through also. You go through the math. Let's try to do it. You can see that this is... This is going to be pretty straightforward, right? 1 times 1, 1 times 1, 1 times 1, 1 times 1. And then 1 over square root 2 square. So 1 over, 1 over 2 times 1, 1, 1, 1. Right? Because this form a 1, 1, 1, 1 matrix. And then 1 over 2, this is the eigenvalue. I have a negative here. So this one also has 1 over neg minus 1 over 2. This is negative 1, right? And then you start, see that 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 1. 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 1. You just go for the, the matrix multiplication, right? 1 times 1, 1 times negative 1, negative 1 times 1, negative 1 times negative 1. And you do the matrix addition. That will be 2, 0, 0, negative 2, which gives you 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Uh, I think I did something wrong. Uh, sorry. What did I do wrong here? So uh, let me do it again. This is the lamp eigenvalue is one. And then I have this. One, 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 one. Oh, I, I did it wrong, right? Because this is negative. Do you see that, everyone? So, so negative right so i actually this off diagonal should be plus right agree because this is minus something so this one should give me zero and then give me two two zero 
Uh, do you see that? Because this is 1 minus 1, 1 minus negative 1, so give me 2. 1 minus negative 1, give me 2. 1 minus 1, give me 0, right? So this is 0, 1, 1, 0. So why did I realize that I did it wrong? Because I found that I'm representing this in the sigma c eigenvector basis. So I should have 0, 1, 1, 0. What I showed you just now is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. That is going to be wrong unless I represent it in the uh, sigma x eigenvector basis. Sorry for the confusion, but uh, any questions? Okay, if not, let me move forward. So we need to understand a new concept, which is the unitary matrix and transformation. It's very easy. A matrix is unitary if u dagger times u equals to i, or u, which is equivalent, u times u dagger equals to i, or you can say u dagger equals to u minus. They are all equivalent. Okay? This is called unitary matrix. Just a definition. And that's it. But why it is important? Okay? Uh, the u, if you apply a unitary matrix, it preserves the inner product of two vectors, okay? And this is very important because the inner product will uh, tell you the overlap between two vectors. When you do tra some transformation, you expect they won't change because the relationship between two vectors is usually represented by its inner product. On our plane, you can think of it this way. You have a triangle. Two knives has a certain angle, they have a certain inner product. And you hope that if you rotate it, right, the inner product will not change. It means they still have the same angle. You will be pretty scary if your car will deform if you turn left and turn right. When you turn left, you hope that it still does not deform. All the knives still have the same inner product. And this is important because inner products represent a lot of measurement. And you hope that in your quantum computer, when you do this trans any transformation, you should not change the result, right? So um, that is the importance of the unitary matrix. And let's prove it, why uh, it will preserve, right? For example, I have two vectors, F and G. And then their inner product, I decided to do F as the bra, is going to F and G in this way, right? Bra cat in this way. Is it okay? That's how you find the inner product. So if we apply a transformation U to the space, then what does it mean? Then F will becomes, let me call it F dash, which is equal to U times F, right? Just like a rotation, I apply the matrix, then U becomes a new vector. And G similarly will becomes G dash equal to U times G. Nothing special, I rotate that. Now the question is, the inner product I have a question. Yeah. Is this uh, roughly equivalent to so, so a matrix? A uh, Hermitian matrix is like equivalent to a symmetric matrix in the real field. So, so is this roughly equivalent to an inverse or rather an polygonal matrix in the real field? Uh, what do you call the one that inverse equals to the transpose? 
before. That would be an orthogonal matrix. Orthogonal, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I later I'll show you that. I, I kind of forgot, sorry. But yeah, I will show you also show you that all the columns and rows are orthogonal. Yeah. Okay. So it's not. So it, it's basically the same thing. It just has the complex conjugate. Exactly. Conjugate tacked on. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So usually what I try to think is change this to star. And then I can use the, I'm uh, not start, I mean, change it to transpose. Then I can use the real fields terminology. Yeah. So what is the inner product of the new matrix? Of course, by definition is F dash G dash, right? But what is G dash? You see, we already know it's U G, right? But what is F dash bra? F dash bra, of course, is equals to F bra, U dagger, remember? Because the corresponding bra, the dual correspondence of this transformation, matrix times the vector equals to the bra version times the uh, Hermitian, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the adjoint matrix, right? So therefore, the inner products equals to F U dagger, U, G, right? UG is easy because G dash is just equal to UG, right, after transformation. And the, the bra, you transform it by making the bra and then take the dagger. But because it's unitary, that means this equal to I. Again, the associative rule, right? We can just group them first. Unitary, so this equal to I. So this is just equal to F G, because this is vector, row vector, this is matrix, but identity matrix, and this is column vector. So it is the same, right? So the inner product preserve. This is the important part of the uh, unitary matrix. And this is the matrix for all the quantum gates. All the quantum gates needs to be a unitary matrix. Okay, so uh, again, although it's easy just to write in Chisheet or Google, you always know what is unitary matrix, but if you can follow what I'm deriving step by step, right, understand why we write in this way, uh, it is more important because in this class, I really want to train you this basic. So in the future, you read other paper. Uh, they're usually the confusing part is all these details. So I hope you can follow. If you don't, just really talk to me, right? Then we can discuss. So we learn a new transformation, learn new type of matrix, unitary matrix, which has the U dagger equals to U minus, the reverse. We already learned another matrix, the Hermitian matrix, which is U dagger equals to U, right? So this is the difference, don't mess up. And if you think you cannot remember, you must put in your cheat sheet. Okay, good. So with that, then let's take a look at the unitary matrix. Uh, and like what just uh, the other students say about this orthogonality, uh, can we see this, right? So we already say that u, u dagger u equals to i by definition because it's unitary. So you have this one, right? So I assume my u is this. B zero zero, and then I'm going to go to let's say B zero J, the J uh, column, all the way to B zero N minus one. To save time, I just go to N minus one zero, and then this is B N minus one J, the J column, B n minus one, n minus one, right? So what I'm doing looks complicated, but it is simple. Or I just, just like what we're doing for this A matrix here. I just label all of them. But particularly, I label a general column called J. And each element will be zero row all the way to n minus one row, right? So B zero J, B one J, all the way to B n minus one J. So in some sense, I can, Recognize this as a call as a vector zero, j, n minus one for each column, for each column. 
right so this is a uh, I don't want to mess up so let me just say that uh, this column right I can treat it as a vector of course it's not vector but this whole thing I can take it out as a vector not for computation but I treat it as a vector something like that is this okay now I have this then I isn't that I need to find the u dagger but how do I find u dagger just do the transpose so when I do the transpose what do I get b00 and then b0j b0n minus 1 what I'm doing is just take this row and becomes this column and similarly I will have bn minus 1 0 b m n minus 1 j and then b n minus 1 n minus 1 what I'm doing is just take this one and becomes the transpose okay but again besides I need to do the transpose I also need to put the conjugate uh, complex conjugates because that is the definition of the adjoint matrix right based on this do you see something now for here if I call this row as this column as J then how would you call this row is the transpose becomes the row and then it's a complex conjugate this one is just like the bra version of j right this is like the bra version of j now let me ask you how do you do the inner product okay on the right it is one zero uh, or it's an identity matrix right based on the definition so this is one one which is okay right but how do you find the uh, each element isn't that it is uh for the ifj element right maybe i i should here i just write it as a i j i row ifj right and you realize that this is equal to delta ij the conical delta because when the row not equal to the column they are all zero because this is identity right let me just highlight it so you see that this is the identity matrix yeah so the content is equal to delta ij but how do you find delta ij again in matrix multiplication the i-th row and j-th column is equal to the i-th row here times the j-th column here and do the inner product right this one times this one this one times this one this one times this one and add them together and we say a i j is nothing but just equals to the inner product of i times the j that is what i'm trying to say do you see that and of course this equal to delta ij so basically it's saying that each row right because i and j j is just the column so each column is normalized okay so their length is equal to one in a unitary matrix okay and also n orthogonal to other columns yeah because when you have a different column it get zero right and this is not just for the columns you can do a similar proof to show that that is the same for the rows so I hope you can uh, understand how I prove it recognize this fact right and then they are uh, of a normal each column is of a normal to each other 
Okay, this is a little bit uh, uh, confusing. Uh, any questions? Please let me know. Okay, um, I assume you are okay. No questions? So again, the conclusion is simple, right? But these are very useful. Later, uh, we might not use in this class, but I use it a lot later to understand the algorithm or uh, things derived by other people, right? This is to prepare you for the future. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit slow, but I will. Uh, I want to finish all the slides. If you, uh, we still have eight minutes, but if you need to leave early, feel feel free to leave early, right? Uh, and then you can watch the video. But I want to uh, finish this. So first, uh, what I want to say is, how do you do a unitary transformation? I mean, just an example, a visual example, right? So let's go through the uh, troublesome and tedious math. Uh, boring, but it's good to uh, review what you will do naturally. Again, I'm using this zero and one, just a 2D plane. You can treat it as X and Y, right? So I have a vector V equals to alpha zero plus beta one. Very simple. Now I decide to do a transformation. I rotate it by theta. This is a transformation itself it becomes V dash, okay? So you already learned this in your geometry or algebra, right? Uh, how to do the rotation. But I can always say, uh, I can find a method to find out the rotation matrix, but there is a way that is easier for me is that instead of cheating uh, this one rotating, counterclockwise instead of treating the V rotating counterclockwise by theta, right? I still have the V here. I can say, well, it's the same if I rotate clockwise. The coordinates by theta and it becomes a new coordinate system, a new basis called zero and one. Now, when I say this, then what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say that is V dash in the rotator one in the zero and one basis uh, has the same representation means the numbers representation for v in zero dash and one dash basis do you see that what i'm trying to say if v dash in zero one basis right i get coefficient saying that v dash equals to how much zero and how much one it's the same as i'm saying for v itself how much zero dash and how much one dash? Of course, there are different vectors, V and V dash. I'm just talking about the representation. It's just like I just want the lumber five, one doesn't eight, five, the lumber five. I'm not talking about the uh, basis. Okay. And why I want to do that, this can help me to find. the transformation easily. This is the only purpose of doing this. And also to let you have a sense on the rotation of the vector itself and the basis, right? So why this is easier? Because now I can represent zero in, term of, in terms of zero dash and one dash. Zero, I'm talking about this original unit vector. In terms of zero dash, it is what? You just draw the uh, perpendicular line, then you say this is uh, obviously equal to cosine, theta. I mean, not obvious, but you need to just draw it, but I won't 
have time to go through this, I just say it is cosine theta, zero dash, right? Zero dash cosine theta plus psi theta one dash. Okay. And then uh one one will be equals to negative psi theta zero dash plus cosine theta one dash. Okay, then what is V in the new system? V equal to alpha times zero plus beta times one, right? That is given. But how about in the new system? I just substitute this to hit. I have alpha cosine zero dash uh, plus psi theta one dash, right? I substitute zero zero here with this with this equation and then plus beta one right one is negative psi theta zero dash plus cosine theta one dash okay and then i collect the term so that i represent them as a in the zero dash and one dash basis, right? So this is alpha cosine. Sorry, I missed the theta here. Right, cosine theta minus sine theta. Uh, I need to multiply by beta minus beta psi beta the whole thing right for zero dash then plus alpha psi theta plus beta cosine theta the whole thing times one dash Okay, this is representing V in terms of zero dash and one dash, but we already say that V in zero dash one dash has the same representation for V dash in zero dash one dash, right? So let me highlight this is one. And because of one, so I know that V dash must be equals to alpha cosine theta minus beta psi theta alpha psi theta plus cosine beta beta cosine theta with this one in the zero basis and this is the one basis okay not the one that zero dash or one dash right we in zero dash and one dash is the same as we dash in zero and one basis okay now then we can find the matrix because if we set just by inspection, right? Inspection, this is a little bit too fast, right? Uh, just by inspection, you can find that U is just equals to alpha cosine theta negative psi not alpha sorry no alpha just cosine theta negative psi theta psi theta cosine theta this whole thing you just try to go in you will see that indeed v dash equals to u times v right so you can try yourself you just apply this matrix to alpha beta then you will get this v dash Now, I hope that you feel this is a troublesome. In this, this is troublesome. And you cannot do this for something you cannot visualize. This is 2D plane, of course we can do it. So that's why the most important part for today is this. How do you find the transform matrix, this U? 
without going through this process, right? And I will just give you the result. If I have an O basis, this, this is something you need to use in your homework question one, which is zero, one, all the way to n minus one. And then I want to transfer it to transform it to the new basis, which is called zero dash one dash all the way to n minus one dash. Okay, so the O basis has n basis vector, right? This is the basis vector. And then the new basis also has n basis vector. In this case, right, the old one only have two basis vector, new basis has two basis vector. I want to transform it. So what is the transform matrix? The matrix, the matrix is this. Zero dash zero. Zero dash one. Zero dash n minus one n minus 1 dash 0, n minus 1 dash 1, n minus 1 dash n minus 1. Each element is the inner product of the O of the new basis and the O basis. With the new basis go first as the row, right? So first row is the row of the new basis by 0. And then you each column correspond to the old basis. And that is how you form the transformation matrix. For example, like what we just did. Let's look at it. We just have this, just now. We have one and zero. And then we rotate it to zero dash and then one dash. Correct? Uh, let me draw a better one. And their angle is theta. Then I say that the transformation matrix is equal to the new one, zero dash zero, zero dash one, one dash zero, one dash one. Okay. But what is zero dash zero? It's talking about the inner product between zero dash and zero. Isn't that that is equals to cosine theta? That is their inner product and they are normalized already, right? This is just an example. Zero dash one, what is that? We're talking about this zero dash and one, right? This is more than 90 degree, right? If you go through the map, this is negative sine theta. 1 dash 0, 1 dash and 0, this two, right? Of course, it's sine theta, right? Because no, it is pi over 2 d minus, cosine pi over 2 minus theta. And then finally, what is 1 dash 1? Yeah, of course, that is equals to cosine theta. This is the same as what we did. You just plug in, right? Maybe this will confuse you because now I put 0 dash 1 to here, maybe just uh, to avoid problem in the future. Let me just uh, make it in the way so it's the same as the, uh, as the matrix. So I put this back to 0, 1 dash, and this is negative, right? So you have cosine theta, negative sine theta for this one, sine theta, cosine theta. Cosine theta, negative sine, sine, cosine. Uh, what I'm trying to show you that is, you trust me, this is correct, right? You can read the chapter one of uh, JJ Sakura. They have the proof or whatever. Uh, this is something very useful for me for transformation. You need it a lot in uh, quantum mechanics and also quantum computing. I, I really hope that you can memorize it. It is not difficult to memorize this. New inner product with O, that's it. Uh, now, uh, I think I should let you go.
uh, this one, uh, the completeness, we don't need to use in uh, assignment one, so maybe I do it on uh, Monday's lecture. Uh, so that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, feel free to leave. Thank you. Thank you very much.